If you don't have direction, discipline leads to drudgery. Mindset is really more important than your skill set. Discipline is choosing what you want most over what you want now. You simplify so that you can amplify what's most important to you. Complexity is the enemy of productivity. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Flow Over Fear. Do you ever wish that you had an extra hour in the day? Of course you do. We all do. We all feel like we're running out of time from time to time, right? Well, my guest today, Scotty Sanders, is going to help us to learn some of those productivity hacks to create that extra time in our lives. And he has a very, very simple methodology to help us do that that involves a simple index card, a three by five card. Because if you don't write your goals on paper, well, then you just remain stationary. Sorry, bad joke. But seriously, Scotty Sanders is a great guest today. He's a leadership expert, international speaker, author, and creator of the success framework Life on a 3 by 5 which increases productivity so you can accomplish more with a level of freedom that you didn't think was possible. And he is, uh, he's, he's done some amazing things in his life, including starting a business at 17 years old, which he built to almost $5 million by the age of 25. He was named Louisiana, Louisiana Entrepreneur of the Year at 26. And he's started charities, nonprofits, and other organizations, is certified by the Ritz Carlton for Exceptional Customer Service, and is the author of four books. And he's passionate about helping people to achieve a more productive life and lead well. And he's joining me today. So enjoy this episode with Scotty Sanders. Well, hey, everyone. And hello, Scotty. How are you doing today? Thanks for joining me today. Yeah, I'm doing great. Good to be with you, Adam. Been looking forward to this. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And and thank you for coming back because I know we recorded this before and we had a little glitch in the video and everything like that. And so I'm excited to talk to you again for a second time, but this will be the first time that the listeners hear it. Uh, so uh, so they're, they're in for a real treat based on you know what I've already heard and what I already know. We met uh, about a year ago, probably by now, um, at, a, uh, at a speaking event uh, back down in North Carolina. And, and I had the opportunity to hear you speak and hear your vision for productivity and and everything. And it was really, really great. It was really inspiring to share a stage with you. And um, and one I I'd love to kind of start from the beginning and get a bit of an origin story because it, it is an incredible story that you have come from. You know, I know that you worked kind of in the family space as well, like kind of growing up and and had a had a had a great family dynamic. And then at 17 started your own business. So kind of give us the breakdown on where you came from, Scotty. I'd love to hear it. Yeah, well, again, thank you for having me, Adam. A very unique situation, and I realized I was blessed with the opportunity to start a business early in life. I just had a, I had a knack for, grew up in that entre- entrepreneur family. My grandfather coached me, developed me, poured into me, always believed in me at an early age. I can remember going to have breakfast with him at seven o'clock in the morning and just, he's dropping pearls of wisdom. And just, I had that entrepreneur bent and my dad bought the business from my grandfather And then so I started really working in that business at age 15 and was very successful uh, working it. And this was a retail store selling furniture and appliances. And so I came up with this idea that, you know, we need to really start selling electronics. And my dad really didn't have much of an interest in doing that. And I sold him on the idea. Why don't you let me just start a store within the store? Give me a little bit of floor space and let me just start this business. And, And he agreed to do it, which. You know, uh, that gave me a lot of confidence that he had my back and believed in me. I think he realized he I, I was he was my safety net, I guess, <laughs> you know, that he would bail me out if, if I needed to. And, and you know, that little startup, uh, it turned into, you know, this significant business in my mind. I mean, more than I ever thought it would be. We end up growing to 10 locations in three different states, doing right around $5 million a year. And really everything on the surface appeared to be going well. But, but Adam, I mean, I was the most uh, over my head, under resourced person. It really grew beyond my abilities. And I was just, every day was a battle, the, the crisis, the challenges, the difficulties, the cash flow. And, and then, you know, I'm a very growth type oriented person. So I always wanted my numbers to be up and to the right. And if we had a bad month, I'd get down. And I don't know, it was a, it was a grind in a lot of ways. It's almost like, what did I create here? And, uh, and so I was, absolutely overwhelmed. I felt like my the 
the load that I had on me well exceeded my personal capacity. And fortunately, I had a wake up call at age at uh, a few years later. I think I was 26 when I had this wake up call that are on the in the line at two o'clock in the morning. I get a call from our regional director and he tells me our largest store is on fire. And that was a burning building experience. You know, Moses had a burning bush. It took a burning building. And that moment was really crystallized in me about my life was out of control. I had no plan, no direction. Every day was a new day. And I really didn't appreciate the things that were happening. And I did not appreciate the people I was working with. And really through that, I discovered really the secret of becoming ultra productive and still having a life. See, I thought you had to give up your personal life to be successful in life. And so although that was a very painful wake up call, it was absolutely the best thing that could have happened to me. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm so grateful that you shared that story because there's so many nuggets of, of wisdom and, and learning lessons in there from those early early moments. And I and and I I think that that fear of that 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 sense of what you went through as you built this success, this early success, I think inherently is something that a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with like subconsciously. And I know I do. I mean, a lot of people fear the idea of failure. They just feel fear this failure. But it sounds like that, that you were kind of living that life that people ultimately fear is this fear of, of, of feeling like you're trapped in this situation, like you, you built this monster, and you can't like get control of it. It's almost a fear of success. Is that a good way to categorize that? You know, to a certain extent, you know, it was I had it's like I had success too soon in life, right? It came too easy. And you don't realize that that's just not how life works. In some ways, early success can be a detriment for you down the road because you don't, you, it's like you got to get, I didn't get reps in. I should have got in. It, it happened pretty easy. And then when things got more difficult, the economy changed. I mean, I can remember, you know, having a conversation with someone here recently saying about interest rates going up. I said, I can remember ha- owing $2 million. Mm-hmm. And paying twenty percent interest. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you know, because the interest rates literally went up over a period of time in the eighties. You, you know, you met, that was probably way before your time. But I mean, just that that change. All of a sudden, you're crushed with the debt and the interest that you're paying. You're just basically working for the banks and making interest payments and stuff. So there's a little bit of that fear of success of like, how do I beat what I did before? Just because you have that drive. And drive is not all bad. It shouldn't be about your personal thing, but how can you turn that to make it a benefit to others? But literally, it became this thing where I felt the fear and anxiety, just the overwhelming pressure of the responsibility of meeting payroll for 40 something people and and getting my my, uh, suppliers paid and those kind of things. It was a it was a even though it grew fast. You know, we had cash flow challenges and personnel issues and people stealing from us and all the things a lot of businesses deal with. And I was just ill equipped to deal with a lot of those pressures and just really just just dealing with a lot of stress and anxiety, not sleeping good at night and and working 70 or 80 hours a week. Yeah. And I see that. I I think there there's there there's a lot of people, including myself, who, you know, when they get into business, uh, the key the the key driver that they think about is profitability. But not a lot of people think about that cash flow, how important it is and how often elusive it is, even amidst high profitability, because if you're growing fast, even if you're making all that profitability, you're not a lot of times that cash is going straight into things like payroll or other growth or things like that. You don't always have that cash. So um, that is a very, very anxious situation to be in for sure. Um, I'm, I'm, I am inspired too by you, by the family dynamic of, of how, uh, how you kind of took on that new role though, like early on, uh, uh, how you, how you, you know, basically took the reins and started this business within the business. And, you, you know, cause I come from a family business background too. I work in a family, a fourth generation family business. And I see, that a lot of times in family businesses, there's these, there's these, you know, there's the core values and there's sacred cows. And I feel like those sacred cows are kind of like what your dad was talking about. It's like, no, we don't get into electronics, even though that's kind of the innovation of the future. But it sounds like there was this good breakaway where you were able to do to take that and kind of own it and make it your own, which I think is a a really important dynamic in in a family business. If there's going to be a family legacy that you're building, and if your kids have an idea, and you know they think it's good and they want to run with it, maybe invest in that idea 
and let them run with it and see where it goes. If 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 you're building trust with them, do you think that was even the you know taking out the stress and everything that occurred lately? Do you think that that was a good uh, approach to to managing or to moving forward with that? Well, certainly it gave me a level of confidence that they believed in me, and that's one of the things I'd say about my parents and my grandparents. In some ways, I look back on my life, Adam, in those early years, and it's like, what were they thinking? <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know if I would have done that, but they they just had that high level of confidence. My, they saw they saw things in me I didn't necessarily see in me, and it gave me the confidence of. And again, I had them as a brain trust, and I could go to them and and bounce ideas off and stuff. But but really, in some ways, it it allowed me to experience some really positive things and a lot of challenges. By the age of 25, I had lived a lot of life. You know, I'd made a lot of bad hires. I had to fire people. I had to let people go. I had to shut down stores. I had to deal with an insurance company and bankers on a hundreds of thousand dollar loss that was involved in negotiating some of those things, just things that you wouldn't think. So in some ways, I believe that experience early in life taught me so much of ben- that's benefited me today. You know, ex- you know, we can have experience and we can go through life and say, I've been doing this for 20 or 30 years, but you don't learn unless you evaluate those experiences. And really that fire, and it really gave me a moment to just take it in and really evaluate where I was in life, the lessons I needed to learn and what that would be to propel me forward. And there are things that I learned 30, 40 years ago that I'm benefiting from today that I'm so grateful. I didn't appreciate it and didn't enjoy <laughs> it in the moment at all. But man, yeah. there are things that I've taken away because pain, as we know, is a great teacher. And there was so much pain wrapped up and fear that I never, I don't want to go back there. I don't want to live that way again. And I don't want others to live that way. And so in some ways, it gave me that experience. It gave me a vantage point that a lot of people wouldn't have that I do have now. So it's, and it sounds like you wouldn't change a thing about it now. Is that is that right? Would is, or is there anything that you would go back and change to make it a little easier, or or would you have just kept it the same so you keep those lessons? Well, again, that's always a tough one because obviously I made a lot of bad mistakes and made some things with people that I wish I would have done differently. But I wouldn't trade the lessons I learned if that's what I had to go through to learn the things now. And some of that is. You know, I'm I'm at the age now that if I have good health, if I keep learning and I can take the lessons I learned in the past, that it will have a greater long term impact for the next 15, 20, 30 years. But I believe potentially my next 20 years can be my most impactful. But there were lessons I learned at 25 that's going to impact me for the next 20 years as well. So in some ways, you know, on the people side of things, when you make mistakes, it hurts people. You don't handle things just right. So there's always a little bit of that. I wish I would have treated this person different or I would have appreciated them more. Uh, so there's a little bit of that pain related to the people side of things. But I'm grateful that the painful lessons I went through are benefiting me today and has helped me to help thousands of other people not make those same mistakes. Yeah, that that's that's I think that that's such a great observation too that that the mistakes that we make or or the pain that we go through can be other people's learning lessons too, not just our own. We can we can bring those things forward and I think that's what you and I both want to do in the world is take what those experiences that we have that yes, there may be regrets, but there isn't necessarily anything we've changed because of the lessons learned. We'll, we'll bring those forward uh to to help other people. Um, yeah, so so you built this successful business that was that was really, really, you know, a lot of lessons in there, a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, and a lot of your time taken into this that was causing you a lot of stress early on. And then the fire happened. Can you tell us what happened and how that changed your how that changed your mindset around how you were living your life? Well, I think it was a directional thing for me. My focus up at that point really was about me and growing, growing the business and adding new stores. It was almost like a, 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 a really an out of control ambition a little bit. You know, my focus was more of I wanted to get bigger. I wanted to add more stores. I wanted to become the biggest at this. And it was not focused on the p- growing people. It was more in growing my material 
des material desires. You know what I'm saying? So but once that happened, it's almost like it was a reset in my mind that I, I didn't want to be that person anymore. I wanted to learn those lessons. And so it reoriented me to I want to build a life that every day I have a plan that's focused on the right things. And it helped me. And it didn't happen overnight, but over a period of time, I developed this process that I have direction and clarity and focus on what I believe are the right things. So I have a simplified approach to daily plans that helps me to accomplish the things that I believe are most important to me now, where before every day is a new day and it's all about doing more sales so I can get more stores or build a bigger house or get a fancier car. Mm -hmm. So is it is it the productivity then that drives the that drives the results as far as like the getting so you know so the ambition side of it is important right we have we have the ambition to be this but uh, you know and and we we have the desire to get those material things every every once in a while because those are kind of the material rewards that we get that but that that productivity a a aspect I mean that that part of it that allows us to have the time to enjoy the life that we have and the people that we're with is, is that what drives the results or, or do we have to work in that like 110%, you know, always going kind of way of life? How, how do we, how do we balance that? Yeah. Again, I always look at productivity as, you know, taking what you have, your life experience, the gifts that you have, your abilities and using that to the fullest, fullest to maximize the results without being crazy busy all the time. There has to be a balance in there. So, and, and I know people that are, I would say some of the least productive people I know that work 70 or 80 hours a week. And I know some people that work 40 hours a week that can run circles around them. I think we sometimes equate crazy busy with productivity. So I want people to be productive. And you do that by having a simple daily plan and focusing on the right things. So we should want to be productive. Why wouldn't we? Much has been given, much is required. Let's take what we have, but let's not sacrifice our family, our health, our mental side of things that we just are so, we're, we're so stressed out. We can't even enjoy the things of life. So again, it's being productive, but not giving up your life to do that. Yeah. Well, let, let's talk about that simple daily plan because I love this idea and I love your framework around this too. As it, it, it all you know revolves around um, you know, a, a, an index card, a three by five index card. Right. And, you know, that's your kind of your secret to being ultra productive. So can you talk a little bit about how that works and, and talk about the simple daily plan that you, you put into place? Yeah. So again, what I talk about is the secret to becoming ultra productive is for you to have a simple daily plan. So you may have your own daily plan, but if you don't, I recommend, this is my daily plan right here, is life on a three by five. And basically this card that I fill out each day, and I tell people you take 1% of your day to plan the other 99%. And when you do that, the other 99% will go better. But on this card, there are six pillars that are incorporated. And the first one is, and there are three mindsets and there are three uh, motivators. And I don't want to go through in great detail, but the first one would be your purpose. That's your overarching thing. Do you have a clear direction and purpose for your life? And one of the things I say that one of the, one of the, one of the mindsets, another mindset is discipline, but I make the point on having daily disciplines. If you don't have direction, discipline leads to drudgery, right? So you, what are you aiming for? What are you, what are you shooting for? Because if you just say, I'm going to be disciplined, but there's no direction, man, that wears you out. That leads to drudgery pretty quick. So again, three motive, three uh, mindsets, which is purpose, disciplines, and then there's gratitude. So those are your, and again, I tell people all the time, you've heard this, mindset is really more important than your skill set, having the right mindset. So focusing on the things that matter to you most. And then the three motivators are your goals and your, your, your goals, your passion, and your priorities for the day. Okay. So goals, passion and priority. So those are your six pillars that I incorporate each day. And it takes a little time to work on the, work these things out. But once you do it, it takes me about 10 minutes a day to fill out my card for each day. I love that. So you fill out a card each day and each on each one, you put your purpose. Now, is that purpose statement, a purpose statement for the day? Or are you just reiterating a purpose that you have throughout your life or 
Yeah. Yeah. Great question, Adam. So it's it's my per and again, it doesn't mean it doesn't ever change, but I'm not changing it every day. It may change every few years. So my purpose statement is to encourage and to empower others or you to live, lead, and to finish well. So as I think about my life, everything runs through that filter of or how does this help me to accomplish my purpose in life? Now, early in life, you, you'll probably spend only maybe 15, 20, 30 percent of your time really aimed toward your, your overall purpose. But as you get older, you need, to, you need to be doing more and more things that help you to accomplish your purpose in life. So that's really my direction, my aim, my target. So I'm making decisions based on, on that. So I write it down every day. And one of the reasons why I write it down is a little bit of science of it engages your reticular activating system that it says to, to it says to myself that this is important. What are you doing to fulfill your purpose for the day? And that's why I think it's helpful to write it down. You don't have to do that. Some people say, Scotty, I'm just not a three by five card person. Find what works with you. Have an app, put it in your phone, however you choose to do it. Put it in a planner if you choose to do that. I like to write mine down. I've got 13 years. I put it in a little, like a recipe box. I got 13 years of cards stacked up that I keep every year, just as a reminder. Someday, who knows, my kids or grandkids or great grandkids may go through and say, what was important to this person? So that's my practice. It helps me. And it gives me confidence because I know I focus on the right things. Yeah, I love that. I love that you keep the three by fives too, because it's it's so important, I think, to to accumulate your wins and just keep them there. Because I feel like our experiences, if, if our if our life is like an hourglass, like we're putting these experiences into that reservoir. And they can be our points of reference for how much of a life our memories, our joys, our experiences, and they can serve as these points of reference for future too. So that fact is is so cool. I like that you keep them for you know your kids to see or your grandkids to see. I like this. I have this activity I like to call the uh, sticky wins, where I where every time I complete a goal or something like that, I'll put it on a sticky note and then stick it on my wall. So I just accumulate all these sticky notes on there, and it, sometimes it drives people crazy though because they just don't like to see all that. But yeah, I, I, so I love that that purpose that you reiterate it. It's almost like an, a daily affirmation to write it down. That writing down is so powerful um, because I think I think when you're writing down things that might scare you, you're taking the power away from it. And when you're writing th- down things that empower you, you're putting power into it. Um, so I love that aspect of it. Um, as far as discipline, now, yeah, I, I like your aspect of of you know that that uh, discipline without direction. I think you said leads to drudgery, which I love because I totally relate to that. I think we've all been in jobs where we've had to have that monotonous disciplined aspect but i think that yeah and i feel like discipline is like that that path to to overcoming overwhelm so can you can you talk a little bit about how that goes on to the three by five card and how to plan for discipline throughout the day yeah in fact i'm doing a talk here coming up pretty soon and there and this i'm going to talk about the secret becoming ultra productive but i have only about an hour to speak so all in, in that time all i'm going to cover is one of the pillars and I'm going to hit on the, the pillar of discipline. And so again, the, about discipline. So think about discipline. I always, I call it my triple A filter. When I think about my three daily disciplines, I want there to be number one, I want there to be a, alignment to my overall purpose in life. If this discipline doesn't align to my purpose, should it even be one of my disciplines? So that would be the first A. The second A is this something I'm willing to be a, willing to be accountable for? If I'm not willing to be accountable for it, it doesn't need to be one of my disciplines. Because when you're accountable to something and you follow through, you know what it does for you, Adam? It gives you, it boosts your self-confidence. But if you don't keep that promise to yourself, then, then it makes you not respect yourself. You don't trust yourself. So it's a very powerful concept. So if, you, if you're not willing to be accountable to this discipline, don't do it. And then the third A under my AAA filter is advancement. How will this discipline advance me toward my goals and my overall purpose? And I like to have disciplines, what I call the multiply time in the future. So like, for instance, on my three by five card, I've got my three disciplines. I write those down every day. They don't change in a year. Now, I might tweak them next year, may change one. But I, my three disciplines, I study every day, I write every day, and the third one, I practice healthy living. And all three of those 
pass the AAA. They all have alignment. They all have accountability because I'm willing to stick with it. And third, they all advance me toward my purpose and my goals that I have, right? And so they're super powerful to me. But th- those things, people ask me, man, you're a, such a disciplined person. Discipline is a choice. Discipline is choosing what you want most over what you want now, right? But we tend to choose what we want now, sleep late, not exercise, not eat healthy, not study, not do those things. Discipline is choosing what you want most over what you want now. And so you're not born disciplined. You make a choice about that. Hey, everyone. I interrupt this program to introduce you to a powerful tool that will help you gain clarity on your vision and accelerate your growth and achievement. If you're listening to this show, it is likely that you have an exciting vision for your life. But the problem is, is that we often get caught up in the day to day. We get distracted. We face uncertainty, overwhelm, and self-doubt. And as a result, the gap between where you are and where you want to be seems insurmountable. And that's why I created a framework for how you can turn your vision into strategic, disciplined action that will accelerate your results in the next 90 days. I call it the Vision Reflection Retreat. It is a two-day solo excursion designed to reignite passion and adventure into your busy life and realign your focus toward your why. This is the very same framework that I use every 90 days to reflect on my own life and my vision and set my goals for the next quarter. And it has been a game changer. And the good news is, is that I'm giving away this Vision Reflection Retreat Guidebook for free when you sign up for my newsletter. Simply go to flowoverfear.com slash retreat and download your free guide and enjoy the journey. Right. Yeah. And, and so a three by five card is not very big, right? So, <laughs> and so it's, I imagine it's, like- It's a little three by five, right? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's tiny. So so I guess for those of us who are dreaming big, like we just, and and all of those like, you know, shiny objects, <laughs> do, I mean, is there is there a method to the like keeping it concise? Like, so that we're just- putting down the important things. Is that, is that a part of it? Making sure that these things. Yeah. Adam, uh, thank you for that question. Cause you, you just exactly right. It's you simplify so that you can amplify what's most important. So you're creating this simple doable. It's not this comprehensive thing. You forget what you're even working on, but how it's laid out is there, there's really your overarching purpose. Okay. So there's one thing you write there, your purpose statement. And then each one of the motivators and mindsets after that, so like like for discipline, I have three disciplines. I have three goals. I write down three gratitudes. I write down three things I'm passionate about. So there are actually five different other pillars with three different items. So you got you got the three by five reversed five by three there. So it's really you have three things. So you have five other pillars outside of the overarching purpose, and you have three things under each one of those. And that's about as much as our mind can handle. Three goals is all that that I have, three goals. And I focus in on those and I have lead measures or activities to move the needle on those goals. I've worked with people that had 20 plus goals and they got so confused, they couldn't even remember half the goals three months in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's... I, uh, I I love that aspect because I, I I'm I'm one of those people that falls victim to the like I'm writing down way too many goals and so a lot of times when I feel that like that urge to write all these things down I'll write down all of the goals all 50 goals that I have and then I'll crumple it up and throw it in the trash because I know it's no good for me it doesn't work right and and so I love that idea of threes there's so much magic in the number three um and uh, and for all my triathlete friends out there you know there's magic in the number 3 <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so we talked about mindset so three so the the purpose statement the three disciplines and the three uh gra- things you're grateful for for that day i'm guessing you're starting with this uh this uh, it, that in the morning right right that's kind of I- First yes. thing in the morning, right? First yeah. thing in the morning. Usually when I'm having coffee in the morning, I've had some prayer time, some meditation, and then I get to my three by five card. Like I said, it takes me about 10 minutes typically to do that, uh, but I've got everything set to go. A lot of times we don't do it. And you know this, man, you're a world-class athlete. You work out, but you got to be prepared to do those things. You can't be looking around for your stuff. So I have a certain spot I go to, and it's part of my daily routine. I remember hearing John Maxwell say years ago, I was having lunch with him and I asked him what's been the secret to his success. And he said, the secret of my success is what I do in my daily routine. 
So having these daily routines, but the three by five is part of my daily routine that I do, among other things. Yeah. And it's, I think that's such an important point too, is just, it, it, I mean, if, if it's on a three by five or on your phone, it doesn't matter where eight or an eight by 10, as long as you keep it concise, but, but just, just that you have a routine for, for, for keeping yourself empowered. I, I really like that. And um, you talked about simplifying. How important is the simplifying aspect to all of this so is in terms of simplifying our, our, our activities in our, in our lives? How, how, how important is it and how hard is it to do that? Yeah. Again, I would say the importance of simplicity, when you simplify, you can amplify what's most important, but if everything's important, nothing's important. And complexity really is the enemy of productivity. Think about that. Complexity is the enemy of productivity. And we are in a complex world. We're getting bombarded, distractions and our, our inbox overload and it just so much we're inundated with stuff. So anything we can do to simplify things, not make it complicated, cut out some of the noise, it's going to help us to be more laser focused on the right thing. So you simplify so you're able to amplify the things that you determine. On my three by five card, I'm making my plan for the day. I'm not being controlled by others that are trying to control my schedule. I control my calendar, not others. You, you may can relate to that because sometimes everybody's wanting to get on your calendar. Can we get a meeting, whatever? And again, you want to serve people and help people and so forth. But I control my calendar. I never use the phrase, man, I am just, when you ask people, how's things going for? I am just so busy. I try to never use that. I might at times say, I've got a pretty full calendar right now. But I don't want to use that term. Busyness does not equate to productivity. Complexity is the enemy of productivity. What can I do to reduce complexity? So simplifying helps me to eliminate some of the complexity in life. Yeah. And complexity too, I mean, leads to a lot of anxiety. I mean, I, I know that for a fact. I mean, when our minds feel complex, so simplifying is one of those aspects that kind of just lifts it away. And, you know, I feel like too, I, I talk to people a lot about this idea of when we're giving 110% all the time, you know, we're, we're basically our 110% that, that effort that we, that we think is a noble cause to like give everything we've got eventually becomes everyone else's 60% because we cannot maintain that kind that level of activity. And so I always say, just give that 80%, give yourself the capacity to give 110% when it really matters. And, um, and so I like that you're planning for that simplicity because life hits us, right? The, the rest of life hits us. We might, we might have a fire breakout um, and that's going to ruin our entire three by five, right? <laughs> yeah. And you have a plan for the day, things change, but yeah. you go into the day with a plan. You know, one of the things, again, you're a world-class triathlete, marathoner. So you, you know, this, sometimes we think we hear this phrase, life is like a marathon. It's really not like a marathon. Honestly, it's a series of sprints that we run, right? And so what do you do when you run a hundred yard dash? You don't get back on the line and run. You, you rest and restore to get ready for the next race. And so that's what I found life to be a lot more like, man, you got to be ready for the sprint. So you got to create margin right on a sheet of paper. If you ever, we don't talk about this, but on a sheet of paper, there's a margin there. We need margin in our life and we don't give ourselves margin because we have to have margin in order to deal with the unexpected things that come up, right? But we've got to be able to rest to get ready for the next race. So it's not a constant marathon. That's an, oh, that's that's such a great way of putting it. And I've, I've never heard it put that way, that life is a series of sprints. Um, and I really like the way that's framed because we that that really prioritizes that rest period in our life. That is so important uh, because we have to be ready for those times of sprint that we need. And man, that that's really that's really powerful. Thank you for thank you for sharing that. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about motivators before we move on from this con concept. And I know we're spending some, I know we're spending some time on that, but this is so, I think this is so powerful giving people this kind of framework to just plan out their day on a three by five. It's, it's huge. So motivators are more like, uh, the, the passion, the goals, the priorities you're talking about. And so I'm, I'm, I'm imagining that the mindset pieces are kind of guiding those motivators. Am I, am I right about that? Or how, how do those work on the three by five? Yeah, I think they, yeah, again, they work together to a certain extent. Again, your mindsets, you, th this is how I want to think. This is what my mind wants to be. But I also need those motivators. So if I'm doing things that don't, I'm not passionate about, 
lack of passion leads to burnout. So the more you can operate within your passion. So for me, my three points of passion is, is personal growth is one of those, my family and leadership development. So I want to make sure that I'm getting, I'm spending time, I'm, I'm investing in those type of things in my life because they motivate me to grow personally, motivates me to develop leaders, motivates me. And I'm totally committed to my family. So the more time I get with my family, I can pour into them, take care of my wife, spend time with my kids and grandkids. Man, that's, that's a motivator to me. I'm passionate about that. So I want to have that there. So that's, that feeds into it. And my goals are things, those are my milestones. That helps me to see that I'm on track. You, it's like when you're you're running, you got to have milestones. If you just look at the total from front to back, it's you need some milestones along the way. That keeps you motivated, right? It's the mountaintop. It's the big picture, the why, the purpose, but you've got to have some milestones along the way. Those are your goals, right? And I have I have annual goals. So I have three annual goals. I look at those every day. I write them down every day. And then I have my three priorities for the day or my other uh, motivators. So I want to, what are the things I need to accomplish today? And there's only three. Now I may do some tasks and there may be some batching that I do, but if I can only accomplish my three top priorities for the day, that is a win. That's a motivator. You know, I checked the box. I got my three most important things done. Most people will say, man, I was so busy today. But if you ask them, what, what did you accomplish? What were your top priorities? They'll look at you like deer in the headlight. <laughs> I don't know, but I was sure busy today, right? right. I know today. And, you, and by the way, being with you today, Adam, made my three by five card. I want you to know that you're one of my yes. top priorities for the day. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that, that no, that no, that's really an honor. I appreciate that. Anytime you can make somebody's priority list, that is incredible. Um, I, I would love to know kind of a little more about how to dis how do you distinguish between just the the tasks and the three priorities you might have? Because I struggle, for example, with like, well, I've got to make these phone calls to my, you know, certain people today, but, uh, but they may not be necessarily prioritized towards moving me in the direction of a goal. How do you distinguish between the two? Yeah. And that's always tricky. And I would just say there's more art than there is mm. science behind yeah. it, right? It's a <laughs> right. gut feel. You're asking yourself, if I could only do three things today and nothing else, what are the things I need to do? And again, and you've seen these quadrants where you see things that are urgent, but not important or are not urgent. But if, and you kind of think through that again, you want to focus on what is the most important. And I remember hearing, um, uh, I can't remember uh, the gentleman's name, but he talked about how you win the day as you ask the question, what's important? I think it may have been Lou Holtz. What's important now, right? And you ask that question, what's important now? And you identify, and that's how you win the day. You ask yourself that question. If I don't get anything else done today, what are the three things that, that are the most important that helps me to accomplish my goals, helps me to fit in under my purpose? And I like being with you today as being one of my top priorities. It absolutely fits in my overarching purpose in life to encourage and to empower others to live, lead, and to finish well by being yeah. on your podcast. Oh, that's, a, that's such a great answer. And thank you very much for that. And I'm glad I can contribute to your mission in that way. That's uh, that's huge to me because you're contributing to mine as well. And if I had a three by five today, um, I would have had you on, my, on it for sure. Uh, because this is this is a huge conversation. It's helping me out. I'm following my curiosity here. And, um, and, I, and I really appreciate this. And I know that that time that you've developed, like since that fire moment, right? That fire moment that kind of changed your perspective or that fully changed your perspective on prioritization and everything like that. You've not only created more value in this world based on the businesses that you built, the, the charities you founded, the family that you have. I know you've been married. Uh, you said you're going to be celebrating your 45th anniversary to your, to your wife this, this week. Um, so you found that balance. Can you talk a little bit about where your priorities are now and where they are kind of going forward? Well, sometimes when I'm speaking, in fact, I was speaking to a group of high school students, it was about 2000 students a few months ago. And when I was wrapping up, I made the comment that I believe my next 20 years will be my most productive and impactful years. And I had one of these high school students came up to me as a young man. He said, Mr. Sanders, I enjoyed your talk so much. 
But the most powerful thing that you said that struck me was you said your next 20 years would be your most impactful and productive years. And uh, that struck a chord. And, and here's the thing. An age is just it's just a number in a lot of ways. You know, I know people that that at, at 20 or 30, they've kind of given up life and they're not making a difference out there. I want to continue to make a difference because I believe as you go through life, you learn important lessons and, and having that motivation that you want to stay in good health keep learning, keep growing, that you can continue to make a difference. And, I, and that's that's a big motivator for me is to continue to make a difference in people's lives. And one of my nonprofits, it's a educational company or educational nonprofit that we teach character education in schools. And I wrote a book called Quest of the Keys. You can go to questofthekeys.org to find out more information. But it teaches a lot of these leadership and character principles I've been teaching for years to adults but it's done in a fantasy fiction form to teach young people because I'm speaking their language. That's how important it is to me. That's a passion point is to help develop the next generation leaders as well. And so we've, we've helped about a hundred thousand students in the United States, but again, we had to get creative. So someone my age speaking to a bunch of teenagers would be a challenge. But now that I wrote a book that speaks their language, they're more, they're more open to hear me out and have that conversation. <laughs> Yeah, you, you've got to teach me the secrets to your success because I've got two teenagers right now and and I can't get them to listen to me, let alone 2,000 teenagers. So, <laughs> but yeah, that that's, uh, and I love that. So you're speaking for that quest for the keys, you're speaking to that for for high school audiences and and those kinds of audiences at, at that level. And is that is that right? Middle school and high school is primarily. So it's, again, we've got curriculum, again, video series. So it's a full-blown curriculum and book that goes along with that. So it's something that, again, we're taking a lot of these principles and we're putting it into a story form and a fantasy fiction story that they get the story. That's what connects with them, but they still get to learn these concepts and principles about purpose, living with passion, how to prioritize the things that we've talked about even today. But if I talk to them about life on the three by five, they're thinking a three by five card. You see what I'm saying? So it's I'm speaking their language. And really what struck me about that several years ago, Adam, I was speaking in another country and I had an interpreter for me that was in, you know, uh, interpreting my, because I was speaking a, a language, English, I think it was in uh, maybe in Nicaragua or uh, I think it was in Ecuador, actually. But it struck me that man, they have a they have someone that's that's tr taking my language and putting in the language they can understand. I need that for teenagers. What would that be? And that led me to story form to share that idea. So that was a 10, that's about 10 years ago that we did that and been able to help a number of young people through the years doing that. That's such a great idea and, uh, and something we need because I mean, you know, that there's, there's value to what we're tre teaching in traditional school, of course, math, science, and everything else, but we're not, but that the lessons of like how to, how to embrace the the leadership perspective and, and live a fulfilled life and, 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 you know, teach people that they have value and, and bring that potential. It's so important for kids to, to bring up. So thank you for, for doing that. And, um, and, you know, for just helping people with prioritizing their time and, and recognizing that, that, uh, that we can, we can be more productive, uh, without having to do more necessarily without having to work that 70 hours a week. Um, something that, you know, I'm constantly working on and I know we all are. So I, I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful that we can do that just on a, on a three by five card. So you have a, a, um, a, a course, um, you know, that, that talks about creating a 25th hour. I mean, it's something that we all, we all want, which is, you know, having that, having that, uh, um, having that extra hour in the day. Uh, so can you talk about that webinar that you have that's available for people? Right. It's completely free, a, res a free resource. You can go to scottysanders.com, which is my website. And I've got a lot of other resources, but I, I'm, I'm making it available where you can sign up for the free webinar called Finding Your 25th Hour. And if you think about what would you do if you got just one extra hour a day that you could use it on whatever you want to? And so through this webinar, you'll learn some techniques and some things I've learned through the years that you can not only get a 25th, you may even get more. And people have gone through some of my training. That's That idea of 25th hour actually came from one of my coaching students that said, it's like I've got an extra hour every day. And that kind of triggered like he, he felt that way. And that extra hour just made a big difference in his life. 
So it's a free thing. You can go to scottysanders.com and there will be a, a link there that you can sign up. And it's it's available when you sign up for that. You can start getting video content immediately and it's no cost. And just a way, again, helping me to fulfill my purpose to encourage and empower you to live the life that you need to live. Yeah, and it's really, really good. I remember, you know, when when we first started chatting, I looked at your video content and it's so good. The teaching, the lessons, talk about like simple and powerful and so much value add. I mean, yeah, so check that out. Check out, uh, go to scottysanders.com, check out that free webinar and check out everything else Scotty is doing. He's also got, he has four books as I understand it. Uh, and, and, you know, one of those is that uh, Life on a 3 by 5 uh, book which teaches you the methods of putting all of that. It's a simple and small book. Thank you so much for uh, gifting that to me, by the way, Scotty. It's a great, great read. Um, and uh, thank you for being here today. Where where else would you like people to find you? In addition to going to scottysanders.com, where can people get in touch? Yeah, they can find me on LinkedIn and they can also find me. I've got a Scotty Sanders uh, speaking on Facebook as well. That's my business page that you can go to. So I'm on Facebook. I'm also on LinkedIn and 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 also uh, I'm trying to think other places, but the website would be the main place I would go. That way they can go and start getting my, I put out a new video every week. That's a video and a blog, which I do some, I think some really excellent teaching that they can get the benefit of a little, a little three to five minute video every week. So that's a great place to get started in a relationship. And if I can help you in any way in the future, certainly feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much, Scotty. This is this was really kind. And this was hugely, hugely valuable. I'm so glad we connected. And I'm so glad the video worked this time because <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I really want this Adam, message out again. <laughs> well, it's been yeah. a pleasure. I'm, uh, it's an honor to get to know you, Adam. You've got an incredible story. You inspire me. And oh, uh, I, I look for you and I working together that we can both get those messages out because I know your heartbeat is to help people as well. And you set a great example of that. So thank you for the, the privilege and honor to be with you today. Thank you. The honor's all mine. And I'm so grateful to you, Scotty. And thank you to everyone else out there for joining us today. Uh, please reach out scottysanders.com. Check out that free content, that free webinar. Uh, this has been a pleasure, Scotty. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today on Flow Over Fear. If you are liking this show, please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. That way you'll be first to know when I drop a new episode, including interviews or trainings or dad jokes. That's right, dad jokes. Add a little levity to your life. And if you liked this episode in particular and you think somebody can get something from it, please share it with a friend and that way we'll spread the message together. Thanks again for joining me today. We'll see you next time.